Hey everybody on YouTube, Cliff Ravenscraft here with my friend Ray Edwards in the house in the Next Level studio. Ray, how's it going? Uh, it's fantastic. I'm thrilled to be here. I've, I've already told you, you've cost me thousands of dollars. I have to buy that device who has a female name that does things automatically. I won't say her name. It's the name that must not be spoken lightly. Yes, the, the Amazon device. Yes. Um, the whiteboard, the live to drive equipment. I mean, just being here. You should have an affiliate link for all this stuff. I do actually have an affiliate link for most things in the description of my videos. In fact, uh, Ray, I don't know if you know this. I have a text expander. Uh, you, you use text expander, I'm sure. Oh, yes, extensively. So, so when I type in my description on YouTube, I usually type in a paragraph or two describing what's in the video. And then I type in um, VVLOG. Which be, or, or No, actually, it's vlog notes all, all together one word. So it's, I just type in vlog notes. And it's a whole laundry list of all the equipment that I use in my studio and my portable gear. Brilliant. And I paste that in every single description of my YouTube channels. Brilliant. Of course. Anyway, so we are getting ready to record an episode of the Cliff Ravenscraft Show. Those of you who are watching this on YouTube are getting it weeks before it will actually land in the podcast feed. So, I, and by the way, I do not plan on putting every single episode of the Cliff Ravenscraft Show into the YouTube channel. So if you haven't yet subscribed to the Cliff Ravenscraft show, it's available in your favorite podcast directory, Apple Podcasts. It's in Google Play, Stitcher, all of those things. And uh, you can, of course, listen to it on the web at podcastanswerman.com. Yes, Ray? If you haven't subscribed yet, what is wrong? What is the problem? What is the hang up? You, you need to subscribe. You're incomplete until you do. You know, I, I, can I read something to you, Ray? Yes. I, I just saw this last night, and I haven't even responded to it yet. But it, it is so much fun uh, when, I get, when I see messages like this. Now, the thing is, folks, I have to – actually, you know what? I'm going to share it with the people who are on YouTube. I, I, I didn't realize. You, people, and, and, of course, those on Facebook as well because we're broadcasting live to Facebook. So they'll be able to see this as well. Um, so I've got my browser here, and I want to go to this thing where I was mentioned in a podcaster's hangout thing here, and I love this. So Heidi asked this question, has anyone ever replaced an old podcast with a new one using the same feed? In other words, giving a new show a built-in audience by having it take over the feed of an existing show. I don't know. Do you know anybody who's done that? Well, Ravi uh, had responded and said, Hi, Heidi. I recollected the... Uh, is that the one that I want to read? Yeah. Um, gosh, I'm not great at reading these things live. This is why I should edit. But anyway, hi, Heidi. I can't recollect the names, but over the years, I've heard of a few folks at one point even subscribe to one show that did this. If the show is just a spinoff of the old show or has closely related theme, maybe wider or narrower context or related rebranding, etc., then it should be no problem doing this. Sometimes, I believe it or not, people stay for the host more than the content itself, which by the way, I agree. Because if they're subscribed to you, a lot of people initially come to you for the content, mm -hmm. but if they're still subscribed three or four episodes later, they're there for the host. Absolutely. That's how podcasting works. And I love this. He, he, he says, the most famous example I know is Cliff Ravenscraft, who rebranded his show from Podcast Answer Man to the Cliff Ravenscraft Show. It's funny how at one point I unsubscribed from his old show, Podcast Answer Man, because he had started to talk a lot about his personal journey and stuff that I wasn't particularly interested in. Sorry, Cliff. And he puts a little smiley emoticon. <laughs> But I came back probably a year later and tried it one last time after the rebrand to see if something had changed. And I've been hooked ever since. I'm now a bigger fan of his than ever before because even though the scope of his new show is much wider now than just podcasting, everything he talks about in terms of business and online marketing and the projects he's working on and the mindset and stuff is completely right down my alley. And now I'm actually looking forward to his episodes each week. So I don't know what prompted that. What, what we were saying that, that just prompted that. Can, do you remember? No. <laughs> I don't either. But It was a good rabbit trail. I'm it, happy we went down it. Exactly. So I, th I think the idea here is, yeah, I have no clue. 
I could go back and listen to the tape, but but it, it doesn't matter at this point. I'm sure. I love that you also still say tape. Yes. Yes. I actually probably, you know what, Ray? I probably get that from you. That's probably true. You know what? We haven't officially started. I'm going to actually use this as the open of the show, but let's officially kick off the show here. How's that sound? Good. <laughs> uh, I've got to find the button. Where Where are you, Michael? Here you go. Hello, everyone. This is Michael Hyatt from MichaelHyatt.com. You're listening to the man who has trained more people to podcast than anyone else on the planet. My friend Cliff Ravenscraft, he is the podcast answer man. Are you ready to take your message, your business, and your life to the next level? Want to learn from someone with more than a decade of experience, training tens of thousands of people from all around the world? Hi, Cliff. This is Pauline from Auckland, New Zealand. John from Calgary, Alberta. Amy Porterfield. Michael Hyatt. Dan here from Dunedin, New Zealand. Ray Edwards. Mark Mason. Mike Stelzner. Pat from Smart Passive Income. It's Darren from Melbourne, Australia. Whether you're looking to launch a podcast or build an online business that allows you to do the work you love, you've come to the right right place. place. Podcast Answer Man presents The Cliff Ravenscraft Show. Now, here's your host, Cliff Ravenscraft. That's right, my friends. Now we have officially started the show. I just could listen to that music for a long time. (laughs) The weird thing is, Ray, is I bought it from premiumbeat.com. Yeah. And because I bought it from premiumbeat.com, it's royalty-free music, which means that you pay for it once. You can use it as many times in your projects as you want to. But now I turn on the TV and, and I see TV commercials that are using my theme song. Really? And, and, so I, get e- and I, also, I get emails all the time with, it, with links to people taking their cell phone, holding it up to the TV and say, hey, Cliff, they're using your theme song. And, and it, there's, a, <laughs> there's a lot of commercials out there that use that music. That's hilarious. Yeah. I love it, though. It's, it makes me want to dance. Well, well, that's what it was. It's, it's like when Mike and Isabella Russell were creating my jingle for me or my audio branding, of course, they have their own musicians. They have their own royalty-free library and stuff like that. But when I was what, one of the things I told them, I said, listen, I know you guys are going to do an awesome job. There's no question in my mind the work that you do. You've done it for Family from the Heart. You, I've seen you do it for countless others of my students and clients. But... I, I got to tell you, my biggest reservation is whether or not we're going to find music that will represent what I feel inside for my brand. And and there's no way you can communicate with words what what it is that you want. And so I went in search of, I went to Music Bakery, uh, Jewel Beat, PremiumBeat.com, and I went through all these different things. And I, I'm like, I, I, and I found like three different songs. And I said, but this one right here, this beat, how it makes you feel, the... The kind of the basiness, I want that, and and so they went to in search of some other songs, and in fact, that song that we just heard, the the music, is based on I think a One Direction beat. So there is a which, and and she says, yeah, that sounds a lot like this song, and she, and she sent me a link to a YouTube video, <laughs> and I'm like, well, that does sound like that. It, it's I think it might be like the best day ever or something like that. That's cool. But anyway, she, but, and I'm like, and she goes, Cliff, do you like any of these, any of these songs? And I'm like, no. She goes, with, I think with the, the script that, you, that we've agreed on, with the wording and stuff like that, I can't, I can't imagine any other song than the one you initially said you liked the best. Well, you did well. well I and, approve. And they did well. Thank you so much. Ray, man, it is such an honor to have you inside the Next Level Studio. It's such an honor to be here. Wow. So we have been, uh, so a couple years ago, a couple years ago, about, about a year ago, um, we were talking about the different things that I like to do as far as when it comes mentoring people, helping people one-on-one. And one of the options that came up was this idea of spend a day with Cliff. And where I would give somebody the opportunity to come to the Cincinnati, Northern Kentucky area and spend a day with me here in my studio. And in my mind, the price at the time was $5,000. And I think your, your, what was yours? Do you, you, do you remember what you said? I, I know what it is now. I don't know if it was the same then or not. I, I think you, I think you were thinking $10,000. Yeah. And, and as we were both talking, 
you said, based upon everything you said and what you say you feel comfortable with, and, and I was thinking, based upon what you said and the fact that I want to increase my mindset of what's possible, we both, by the end of that conversation, said, you should offer the day with Cliff package for 7500 and And it was just clear as day that we, we were both thinking that would be the right price. And you, I think, wrote the copy for the Spend the Day with Cliff package. And Daphne Scott was the first person to take me up on that. Yay, Daphne. And, uh, and by the way, um, Daphne is going to be either, she's either been on the previous episode of this podcast or she'll be on the next episode. It's good to be a Time Lord. Yes. But you never know quite where you are in the temporal spectrum. Exactly. Because we are pre-recording this one weeks in advance. But um, anyway, when you, when you and I were talking about it, it's like, well, you had proposed, why don't we do, because you said you have the Day with Ray package. Right. And I'm now offering the Day with Cliff package. You said, why don't we do an even exchange where we you know, spend one day back and forth. And, and I think I said, you know, we could, we could write each other checks or we could just realize it's value for value. Yeah. Either way, I'm honored to be here. I'm excited. And I've already gotten my value. I don't know about you, but I got my value last night. Yeah, there's, there's no question. I had my value by the end of the day yesterday as well. So incredibly awesome. Ray, glad to have you here. What are we talking about today? Because I have no notes. Um, but I, I think probably the theme of the big leap is, is still in my mind. And I, I think probably you and I could have a conversation about our interaction together about the big leap. I think that would be a great thing to discuss because I've got maybe a different perspective than other people have heard about this so far. So why don't we just tell that story? Well, real quickly, I, I, I need to do this, I, I believe, even though a lot of folks have listened to 514, 515, 516, and beyond. Oh, yeah. But the reality is is that there are some folks, this is your first time checking out the Cliff Ravenscraft Show. So The Big Leap, by the way, is a book by an author named Gail Hendrick, or Gay Hendricks. Um, and Gay wrote this book to help people with what he calls the upper limit challenge or the upper limit problem. And the upper limit problem is a problem where when you experience more success than you feel worthy of experiencing. People don't have that problem, do they? I've experienced it. I'm being sarcastic. I know you I have. have. I have too. Yes. So, so and, and I thought that initially it was just financially. I, I understood the, um, the, problem, the upper limit problem when it came to finances. We have this thermostat, thermostat in life yeah. where we, we have like whatever, it might be, it might be a hundred thousand dollars a year is where your thermostat is set, yeah. and if your thermostat in your comfort of feeling worthy of how much money is okay to make is set at a hundred thousand, it's amazing that if you were to lose your job and you go out and get another job, you're going to be making you're going to get another job within the range of a few thousand dollars of a hundred thousand dollars a year. Yep. Or if you win the lottery, or if you win the lottery, you'll you'll eventually get back to. $100,000 a year. You'll find a way to get rid of all that money. I, I learned this from T. Harv Eker. Yep. I have a millionaire in mind. That's right. And I am, by the way, a money magnet. <laughs> if you guys haven't heard of that book, T. Harv Eker wrote a book called Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. And I, gosh, that, that one really helped me through the Upper Limit Challenge financially. Mm -hmm. But I didn't realize that the, this Upper Limit Challenge was limited. Was, I, I didn't... What, I thought the upper limit challenge was really just about financial stuff, but I didn't realize that there's an upper limit challenge when it comes to the amount of love that you feel worthy of receiving in your life and also success. So there, it's not just money. You have a, you have a thermostat on how much love you, and, and when I, and by the way, this book also says that the upper limit problem is when you experience more money then you feel worthy of, then you'll self-sabotage and you'll lose it, which is what you just talked about. Mm -hmm. And if you experience more love than you feel worthy of, you'll do things to sabotage relationships. You'll begin to criticize and begin to start arguments with others. And sometimes if you feel more joy than yeah. you feel worthy of, then you're, subconsciously your body will cause you to become ill, ill, like literally experience physical illness and sickness 
as a result of your body bringing you back to the comfort zone or the to be back in, te- in integrity with where your thermostat is set. Now, remind me before we finish this discussion, I want to come back to that. I want to tell you something that happened to me yesterday when I was on my way here. I was driving here. Okay. That relates to the illness thing and the upper limit problem and how it can manifest itself as an illness or a pain in your body. But I, I, I heard you talk about, you, you talked to me about this book and you were very excited about it. I mean, you were over the moon excited. It was, I've heard you like this before and I thought, well, this must be an extraordinary book. I should put everything else aside and read this book. I got the audio book and I had a drive to make. So I listened to most of it on a drive. The rest of it I listened to on a stationary bike, listened to the whole thing. And what did I say to you? You, you? I think you said, it was a good book, but I'm not sure I understand why it had such an impact on you. Can you explain more? Yes. It, 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 in essence, if I could paraphrase, what's the big deal? Yeah, I didn't say it exactly that way, but that's kind of how I felt. Yeah. Like, well, I don't, I don't get what the big deal is. And, and then I sent you a string of texts. A string, <laughs> a yes. St- a it's str- more like a rope. A rope of texts. I don't think I've ever gotten... That much text messaging from one person in one short period of time ever. You can thank Apple for allowing me to have iMessage on my computer with my keyboard for that. Ah, oh, now it all becomes I, clear. Because I was, I was not thumb typing that thing. Okay. Yeah. I, so if you, ever, if you ever see more than one sentence in a text message from me, that means that I'm in front of my computer with my keyboard and look out because there's a lot of, com- there's a lot of words coming at you. Okay. I get it now. I thought you were thumb typing on No that. way. Okay, so now my respect for your thumb typing Jedi skills has diminished somewhat. So, so I tell you about this book. You obviously feel like, oh my gosh, if Cliff's recommending this, uh, it could, and by the way, for th- folks that don't know this, Ray has a reading list like no other, and he, you, you're very intentional about what books you read. And one of the things you said, there are a few people in my life who can rearrange my reading schedule, and I'm going to go check this book out. And so you, you took that much stock into the fact that I said, oh, my gosh, you have to read this book. You know, we, I would love to have a conversation with you. Yeah, that's a big deal for me because I've got good friends who have recommended or given me books. I have a very good friend who gave me a gift of a book like six months ago, and he asked me the last time I spoke with him, have you read that yet? And I had to say, nope, it's in the stack, but it hasn't made its way to the top yet. But your recommendation, I took it and put it in the top, bumped out everything else and read the book. And then I had to come back to you and say, okay, I, I don't get it. What's the big deal? So and then I and I sent you the rope of text. Yes. And after reading the rope of text, you had a, you decided to what? What happened after that? I I decided I needed to go back and reevaluate my opinion of the book, and reprocess what I had read because I I I saw things in myself because you pointed them out. I think you should explain about the zones. Okay. So th- the book has this premise that there are four different zones that we could do work in. Uh, the first zone, which many of us get stuck in far with far, for far too long than far longer than we should. The first zone is the zone of incompetence, and that is where you are in your work that you do. You're doing things that you're not good at. I mean, it, it, you're suffering through. Uh, an example of this is my Kentucky State Sales Tax Reform uh, form that I have to do. The Kentucky State Sales Tax Form, it's, it's, a, it's a legal size sheet of paper, so it's not a, a letter size sheet, so it's a, even a longer form, more intimidating, and it has all of these formulas, math, okay, and we all know how Cliff is with math, and this one form, the very first time I, I, did, I filled it out, it literally took a day and a half of my business for and, me to fill this one form out. And you're a smart guy. I'm, yeah, I would say that. And the, the, you know, then, of course, I didn't have to do it again for another year. And so the next year that I did it, uh, it took me an entire day still. And, I, and, I've, and then eventually I got to the place where I, it's like, wait a second, you know what? I'm learning this from scratch once a year. Why don't I take notes on what I'm learning? And I've gotten to where the tax form now only takes me about 45 minutes. But here's the thing. Even doing that tax form now, taking 45 minutes, it's in my zone of incompetence. Not my zone of competence, because the reality is there are a ton of people out there who could still do it better than me. Because if I took that same form to my accountant and gave him my P&L statement, he would have it done in five minutes. So that's when you're, when you're doing things like that, 
spending more time than you should. If some, if you gave it to somebody else, they could do it in a heartbeat. They're much better. That's your zone of incompetence. So the idea, the author says, we need to get to the place in our business, in our work, uh, where we no longer do anything within our zone of incompetence. So yes. we graduate. We sometimes will take a leap into our zone of competence. And our zone of competence is when we are doing things that we are good at. And the, the premise here, though, is the things that we're doing and we're good at it, there are other people who are equally as good. Not better than you, not worse than you, but there are other people who could do just as good a job at doing this one task than you could. And many of those things, it'd, it'd probably make a lot of sense to delegate that out, hire out to somebody else to do those projects for you. There's no, going to be no loss of, of, of um, quality, if you will. All right. Then if you, if you can delegate most of that stuff out, then you have taken a leap into hopefully your zone of excellence. These are things that you are gifted at, that you're, unique, you're, you're gifted and talented that you can do these, and even though there are other people out there who can do these and do it quite well, the reality is is you can do this at a level that is better than a lot of people or most people. This is your zone of excellence. And I thought this was the promised land. And I had too. I thought, matter of fact, I've been operating in my zone of excellence for the past seven or eight years in a very big way. And, and financially, I've been rewarded quite well you know, with my income over the years, and and exactly what you just said, I thought this was the promised land. I'm operating in my zone of excellence, but then I read this book and realized there's a fourth zone, and it's called the zone of genius. And to actually go, it, it is a leap from your zone of incompetence to competence, and a leap into your zone of excellence. But to go from your zone of excellence to your zone of genius is a big leap. And the zone of genius, real quickly, is simply this. Actually, no, it is not simply this. But it, I'm, going to si I'm going to simplify it by telling you that your zone of genius is doing things that you are uniquely gifted at and called to. If you will, I believe it's that, it's that zone where you're doing the thing that you were put on this earth to do. Yes. And I'll admit, when I first went through the book, I kind of zoned out on the zone of genius it was because of the name i felt like oh, it seems kind of over the top the zone of genius you know it, does everybody have genius and you know i believe that everybody does but it it still kind of i glossed over it so that's what left me wondering well i don't see what the big deal is and then you began to reflect back to me you even told me well i think this is here ray here's what i think you're doing when you're operating in your zone of excellence which i think you operate in most of the time and here's where I think your zone of genius is. And when, when you told me those things, I, I stepped back and thought, I need to take another look at this because Cliff is so excited. He wouldn't be excited if it wasn't for real, if it wasn't a real phenomenon that he's discovered. And he said things to me, that, you said things that kind of pierced me a little bit in my heart. I felt like, oh, this resonates with me, so I need to go back and reevaluate. And so I did. And you were right. It is a big deal. This book is a big deal. So... Ray, I'd love to hear some of the things that, what, what are some of the concepts that the first time through, they were just like, ah, okay, but the, the second time through, what are some of the things now that are, that are a big deal for you? I didn't make a big, a big enough distinction between zone of excellence and zone of genius because I know that I'm a good, talented writer and that I do, I do good copy. Sales, I write sales copy for a living. I write the words that sell people's ideas, their products, their services. That's what I'm known for. That's what I make most of my money doing these days actually make most of my money teaching how to do that instead of doing it. And I felt like I had, that's, that's the promised land. This is what I'm put here to do, but not really. You know, what I'm really put here to do when I'm teaching and working with people, the thing that lights me up is when I see the, the hope ignite on somebody's face when they realize, oh, I can actually do the thing that I've dreamed of doing. I can actually make this business or this, or this charity or this cause that I'm working on. I can make it successful by using the things that Ray's teaching me. And I realized through going through this book and really processing what the zone of excellence is versus what the zone of genius is, I realized it's not the vehicle that I'm using to get people there is not really that important. It's just a vehicle I discovered that works. 
that gets me to the place where I'm doing what I was put here to do, which is to encourage people, to show people the possibilities in their life, to get them to believe in themselves, to get them to see themselves the way that I believe, the way that God sees them. And you can only see that sometimes through somebody else's eyes. And so I I feel like that's part of my zone of genius is being able to bring that out in people. And that's when I come alive. It's when I'm, I, I lose track of time. I don't run out of energy. I'm like you, I'm an introvert. So interacting with people in general tends to, I love it. I love people, but it drains me. It drains my energy. <clears throat> Excuse me. Unless I'm doing what I just described. Then it doesn't drain me. Then I'm on fire. I could go for hours. You were at my event, the Copywriting Academy. I was. I was teaching copywriting, but there was the second night, I stepped down onto the floor of the event. There was hundreds of people there, and they started to line up. And my, um, my, my, my wingman wasn't there to guard me from the crowd. And so I started talking to people, and I realized, oh, I'm really loving this. And so I started having conversations, and they, they, people lined up, and I spoke to people until there was nobody else to speak to. I don't know how long I was there, maybe a couple hours. I talked to probably 80% of the people in the room, and it was all them telling me their story, me reflecting back to them, well, here's what I see in you. Here's what I see in your work and your life and your personality. I Encouraging them in places where they were discouraged, and I was operating in that zone, and I was energized. I had more energy after teaching all day long and standing there talking to over 100 people for a couple of hours, had more energy than I had when I started the day. So that is an illustration of how important this zone of genius thing really is. It is. And it's causing me to look at my experiences like what you're talking about in at past events from a whole different perspective. Uh, so, and, and, and I'd love to have you evaluate this from this perspective, okay? So one of the things that uh, Gay Hendricks says in the book, he says, uh, the, if the first thing you need to do before we approach you know, what the zone of genius is and all this other stuff, you have to make a decision. You have to make a decision that you are willing to, are, he asks you the question. He says, I want you to answer the, this question. Are you willing to feel awesome all the time? And of course, everybody says, yeah, sure. Well, it, it, exactly. That's what they might say. But there is a thermostat of yes. how much awesome we are. Allow, we allow ourselves. Yes. And 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 what he says is that you know if if you experience more love, more joy, more success than where your thermostat is set, then you will sabotage that. Ray, I wonder if this whole thing we call introvert in, introvertedness sometimes is tied to our upper limit problem. You so, just blew my mind. So get this, I, I, and this is where I'm evaluating, okay? So here's what happens. We, we go and we stand in line, we, we get up on stage, we talk, we share our message, and then after, after that, either immediately following our talk or throughout the, the days following, you know, the days of the conference that, lead, or that continue on after that, People are consistently coming to us, and they're what are they doing? They're bestowing love and gratitude, and and telling you how much they've been inspired by you, how much what you do means to them. And there comes a point. There comes a point where you're feeling so much joy inside of you because you realize you're really doing what you most want to do in the world, which is benefit other people's lives. You want to help them see. You want to help them be, understand more of who they are and to become more of who God created them to be, to break free. And they're sitting there telling you, Ray, you're doing this for me. This is what, I, this is what you've meant to me in my life. And you're feeling all of that. And, and, and I'm saying this for myself. And I'm feeling all of that at Podcast Movement. And I'm like, wow, that's awesome. But then all of a sudden, subconsciously, I'm emotionally drained. And there's something going on et- internally that says, Dude, you need to be wiped out, and you need to you need to go and rest. You need to calm your horses down. Don't let your, don't let this go to your head. And then I don't know about you, Ray, but when I come home, I've experienced what I've always called and told people is post vacation blues, where I literally come back depressed. Yep, I call I it. I come back depressed. I call it PEDS, post event depression syndrome. Yeah, I even I even had a big label I made for it. <laughs> Did you it's really? Like, yeah, I just I just shared it with you. And it's like it was a pet. Here's my pet, my precious, 
My precious depression syndrome. I, you know, I never thought of this until you just explained it, and I think you're 100 percent right. Why you're, can't you? Why are why are we fighting? Internalizing the joy that just came from that. If what you're saying is correct, that means that the whole thing about being an introvert for some of us is a complete myth. It's just a label we've made for ourselves to explain a phenomenon we didn't understand. I'm I'm beginning to. I, I, this is a theory that I'm I'm looking into because I I do know for a fact that it's like whoa, it's not right for this. This is what I know because I've been evaluating this ever since I read the book. And I know that I've been saying to myself subconsciously or unconsciously and consciously, it's not right for me to experience that much joy all of the time because other people out there don't experience this much joy in their life, sometimes ever. And so, wow, I, I, you know, who am I to experience so much joy? You know, and, and I've even heard people say, well, you can't truly feel joy in life unless you have experienced great pain. Oh, really? Yes. Hmm. Well, I beg to differ. So that's uh that's definitely a that that's a whole works contract deal where where we're saying you you can't you only deserve what you've worked and paid for. And and yet none of us paid for being here. We 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 didn't do anything to get here. We just showed up. Yeah. So life is a total gift from the beginning. Uh, Jesus said that he came so that our joy may be complete. Um, you may not, that may not be your bag, but it's mine. So that's important to me. And this concept that you've just been laying out about how we, we have a thermostat, I believe the thermostat thing, I never thought about it being the explanation for the introvert phenomena. You reach a point where you've had too much praise, too much joy, too much adulation, too much recognition of your gift, and your thermostat kicks on and says, oh, that's too much. So now we got to get you out of this situation. So I'm going to make you feel bad. I'm going to make you tired. I'm going to give you a headache. And after you leave this place, I'm going to make sure you don't stay pumped up on endorphins. I'm going to make you feel depressed, get you back to the level where you're comfortable, where you believe you deserve to be. That's exactly right. Ooh. So let me tell you my experience I had. I alluded to this earlier. I was driving here. It's about a four and a half hour drive to get here from where I was. It was in Nashville. And I was meeting with somebody and we were talking about my book, which I'm talking to a couple of different publishers about publishing the book. And the person I was speaking with offered to share this book with a celebrity. And he said, I think this person will really like this book. And I think he would probably be willing to endorse it, maybe even recommend it to people. And I was elated. I was over the moon, excited about this. And I was in the car the very next morning, which was yesterday, driving here, and I started thinking about that. And within 30 minutes, Cliff, I started to get a migraine. And I pulled over to rest stop because I couldn't drive with this migraine. And I went inside, splashed some water on my face, came back out, was looking at the sky, and I thought about this upper limit problem, this thermostat problem, and I thought, what if the reason I have this migraine is not neurological? What if it's because I've hit the upper limit? I can't accept that this great thing just happened, that I deserve it, and that God wants me to have it. So I've given myself a migraine to take me away from that space, from that joy. And I promise you, within five minutes, my migraine was gone. Yeah. And that's what, that's what Gay writes about in his book when he talks about this. And I, I, I admit, Ray, I, I literally, this is going to take us down a rabbit trail. Um, but I remember where I was when I heard Gay talking about this in audio form in the audio book, where he was talking about the fact that he, he had this overwhelming fear about his daughter who had gone away to college, that there was something terrible, blah, blah, blah. Yep. And, and then he goes on and he's like talking about physical symptom after physical symptom after. And it's like, wait a second, you, you mean to, how, how is it that you can say, you know, how, did, how can you tie these physical ailments and illnesses to, to a psychological mindset limitation. Well, I remember where I was, and I also remember it pissed me off. Can I say that on your show? You can say that. It pissed me off because I've, my reaction was, so you're telling me if I have a headache or if I'm sick or I have some kind of health problem, it's my fault. 
and I got really angry about it. And that made me stop and examine, well, why am I so angry about this? What, why am I so sensitive about this? And usually I find when I'm, when I'm overly sensitive about something and it makes me very upset like that, it's usually because it's touched on some deep truth that I need to recognize. Now, I, want, I think it's important immediately to follow that, the, that conversation up with the fact that gay does not suggest that every physical ailment right. is, an, is a result of your upper limit problem. But what he often suggests is like when you are feeling a new illness come on or an extended illness, you might want to ask yourself, could this possibly be an issue with an upper limit problem that you are now facing? And Ray has obviously, uh, oh, okay. what's going on? I told you earlier I hurt my back. Yeah. This was after the migraine. So as we were talking about this, I thought, well, what if my back problem is just the manifestation of that same upper limit problem and it's moved? Because I got rid of the migraine. Yeah. Now, now my thermostat has decided, okay, I'll give you a backache. I don't have a backache anymore. Wow. Oh, I, that Yeah, I, I believe that too. And, and wow. It, guys... You have to read this book. It's called The Big Leap by Gay Hendricks. I can tell you right now, I, I know for a fact in the past several weeks, over a thousand people in my community have already purchased this book. Uh, if you haven't listened to the audio book, then go listen to the audio book first. That's the way that I encountered it first. I believe the next step after that is to get the, the Kindle version and to go through and highlight it and take notes as you go through a second pass. At least that's what's worked for me. Maybe you have different methods, but whatever. I encourage you to to take a look at this book. And I would encourage you to, to look at it, to take it in slowly. I The first time I read it, this is also part of the problem, I'm going to admit it. I listened to it at double speed. <laughs> I was trying to get through it. And so I didn't take it in. I, I encourage you to take it in. Slow down. It's a short book anyway. Yeah, the, if, you listen to the, if you listen to the audio version of it at one speed, it's only five and a half hours. Yeah. Literally on a Saturday, you could go out and 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 go for a drive or a long walk or a whatever. I mean, on one day you could actually listen to the audiobook and the to read it, you could actually get through it much faster. But I encourage you not to. Yeah, I encourage you to not to do that as well. And so I've been through it twice now. I'm going to go through it a third time. I'm actually going to get the physical version of the book now, because when I study a book, that's my my method of really studying and digesting a book is to get the physical version. And I underline and make notes. Then I use the uh, inside of the front cover and the blank pages that are at the front and back of the book to make notes and make my own index about where in the book are the important points. Yeah. And once I've done that, I, I feel like I really have a mastery of that material. And this is a book I want to master. Mark on Facebook is saying, do you have an Amazon affiliate link for this book? I do. It's uh, podcastanswerman.com slash big leap. So podcastanswerman.com slash big leap. And of course, just full disclosure for the FTC, I do earn a commission if you purchase that book. I think on Amazon, I get 2% of anything you purchase within 24 hours of clicking that link or typing that into your browser. So if you've been thinking about buying that next iPhone, feel free to just throw that on into your shopping cart. Uh, that would be acceptable. But anyway, yeah, thank you so much for asking the question, Mark. I do have an affiliate link, podcastanswerman.com slash big leap. But it's not why I'm sharing this. I'm sharing this because I believe that I do. I, and I asked Dan the question recently, Dan Miller, our mutual friend. He was on the podcast here. And I asked him, I said, a lot of people are coming to me and say, Cliff, do you, do you feel like everyone has a zone of genius? And... I, I can tell you, I, I struggled with the question. I wonder, does everyone have a zone of genius? And then after a great deal of thought, I said, I, I believe everyone does have a zone of genius. And I asked Dan the question on the show, and he's like, and he didn't hesitate. He's like, absolutely, because I think he's probably thought about this a great deal I longer. I just than. hear him, absolutely. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I, if I could go get the, I could go roll back the tape on Dan's conversation. It, it sounds just like that. So, but, Anyway, I and I told him as like I just heard Ray and Sean talking on the podcast about, you know, can anybody, you know, do something on your show? And you said, Well, what about people who are paralyzed? Or somebody said, one of you said, What about people who are paralyzed? And then you brought up Johnny Erickson Tata. Uh, I who was it? Um uh Stephen Hawking. Stephen Hawking. So he, those people, they're paralyzed, you know, it, and they're able to operate in their zone of genius. Yes. I believe everybody has a zone of genius. If you don't know what yours is, you just haven't discovered it yet. So that should be 
I think that should be your number one priority because it's what, it's what you were put here to do. Yeah. How can you not, how can you waste time not knowing what that is? And, and the funny thing is, is, and this is why this book has meant so much to me, Ray, because I know what my purpose on this earth is. And, and it, it's, it took years to fully understand it, but I do believe I know why I'm on this earth. And I, am, I have been put on this earth to be a source of entertainment, education, encouragement, and insp- inspiration to other people. To use my voice to take the things that I've learned and the things that I'm experiencing and to authentically process those things with, authentically with, with my true feelings, transparently sharing the things that I've learned, the things that I've experienced, and how I'm processing those to teach others in an effort to encourage and inspire them to become more of who God created them to be. That's pretty clear. And the, the thing is, is I believe everybody out there is, they have this zone of genius, that what they've been put on this earth to do, what they are uniquely gifted to do at a level that other people just, their mind would be blown if they actually saw you doing it. And, and so the interesting thing, this book, one of the things I love about it is that it actually gives you the formula, or not the formula, that's not the right word, but it gives you the steps in, in how to discover what your zone of genius is. So there are, and there are four questions, and I'm actually looking to see if I can find this real quickly. Do you want to say something while I look this up? I was going to say, what are, what are the questions? What is the method, Cliff? But um, I, this is, I just want to emphasize that this is important enough that you should, I, I don't use the word should very lightly because I feel like that puts um, a little bit of guilt on people that, well, that you should be doing something. But I think it would be worth considering getting this book today and beginning working on this, because if you have any part of your life where you feel like you're not satisfied with how things are, you long for more, and maybe you even have tried to get more in the past and it didn't work and you don't want to get your, quote, hopes up, get your hopes up. This book can really help. And it's not that, I don't think Gay invented this, but I do think he discovered something and was able to language it and distill it in such a way that it's easy to understand and it's very impactful. So I really encourage you to go through this process, get the book, and go through these questions that Cliff's about to share. Yeah. So, and and I want to just give you an introduction to the questions, and I don't, I do want you to just off the top of your head start, you know, reminiscing and thinking about this, but don't think about it too much right now. I want you to just think about the questions first, and then when you get into the book and you get to these questions, that's when I want you to pause and really take write the questions down and then begin to answer them. But here are the questions. The first question is, what do I most love to do? And I put wrote in parentheses here, something that I can do for long stretches of time without getting tired or bored. Does watching Star Trek count? It, do you love to do it? And can you do it for long stretches of time without getting bored? Yes. That may be within your zone of genius. I love this. <laughs> anyway, you know, and the funny thing is, Ray, is I do that. I, I, I do love to watch TV, and I can do it for long stretches of time, and I believe that it is a part of my zone of genius, because there are things that I learn in watching many of those episodes, and it inspires me and gets me thinking about things in a different way, and I told you the other day, one of the things I instantly love to do is take the things that I've learned and I've experienced and immediately turn around and start sharing it and talking to other people about how I'm processing these things. And just the act of doing that for me is my zone of genius. And people tell me all the time. If you think about this, Ray, how did Stephanie and I start this business with a $35 investment? I was just thinking about that. It was the Lost Podcast. We started watching a television show, enjoying it. Time flew by. We got behind a microphone and over 60,000 people around the world subscribed to it and the number one thing that we got is, wow, I am so inspired and motivated by what you and your wife shared. Do you know there are, I would say there are at least a thousand people today who are debt free because Cliff and Stephanie talked about debt free living and Dave Ramsey. And, and I would say that that's an extremely conservative number. I would say you're right. So, yes, I, I know, I, I think you may have been a little facetious with the question. I was at first, but I think internally there was something in me that was new. I was speaking truth because just 
I'll make one comment about that show, about the Star Trek TV shows. They, ha- they all have one thing in common. They have an optimistic view of the future and of the inherent goodness of humans and what's possible for us. Yep. Yeah. I, I, I love it because, I, I, of course, I'm in, I'm, in the, I'm in the first third of season three of Deep Space Nine right now. I just started at the beginning of Voyager. Did you? Yeah. Nice. Have it's, you seen all of the original, all of Star Trek Next Generation and all of Deep Space Nine? I haven't, I haven't seen all of Deep Space Nine. Oh, dude, I would encourage you to stop Voyager right now. That's what my son told me. Stop Voyager right now and, and suffer through the first season and a half of, of Deep Space Nine. But I, I will say this, don't skip anything. Take all of season one and season two because it will pay off in season three. That's exactly what Sean told me. Did you guys talk? Nope. That's weird. Nope. But I was actually encouraged by a dear friend of mine to skip Deep Space Nine and go straight to Voyager. And I'm like, I can't, mm. I can't do that. that mm. that's, that's not within me. I, I have to, I'm, I'm, I'm going through the progression of all of Star Trek. But Deep Space Nine is incredible incredible i just i just had another re- revelation what's that what's the you may not get this immediately but what's the biggest philosophical i'll just tell you the biggest philosophical statement that i carried out of the original series was something that the vulcans say to one another live long and prosper and prosper which happens to be your i think your zone of genius Okay, back to the questions. And, 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 and I would even say, uh, I would even put some emphasis. This is one of the things I learned from Tony Robbins where you, you put inflections. So there's live long and prosper. Then there's live long and prosper. But this is the one that I think, Ray, is you. Live long and prosper. I love it. I love it. Yes. There was a reason I brought up Star Trek. See? Gosh, I love this stuff. Okay, so the first question you want to ask yourself is, what do I love to do? Something that I can do for long stretches of time without getting tired or bored. The second question is, what work do I do that, uh, that doesn't seem like work? Stuff where when I do it, I say to myself, this is why I do what I do. And for me, Ray, I, I can tell you there, I, I know so many of these things that I do. Like when I, when I put together a vlog or I record a podcast or I go live on Facebook or I have a one-on-one mentoring call, not a coaching and consulting call. There's mm-hmm. a difference. Oh, yes. But where I get on a call where somebody has paid me to say, Cliff, I'm really struggling in a certain area of my life and I just need somebody to talk to to help brainstorm some ideas and, and I can get on a call with them and help them uncover some limiting beliefs and, and with a one-hour call, their life is on a completely different trajectory as a result of that call. Yes. The, when I get on those, I'm like, that's the, I, I get off. The, here's the thing. I will have, there are times, Ray, that when I've had one of those calls scheduled in the morning, and then I had all the work that is in my zone of excellence, the things that I don't want to do. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I'm not looking forward to the rest of this day. But, I'm, but I get on, and I actually, the, the call initially was just another thing on my thing, because I didn't know what this person, what they might want from me. Right. So I get on the call, but it turns out to be one of those calls. And then I get off that call, and you know what I do? I cancel everything else on my schedule, and I say, Stephanie, you want to go to lunch? And we go and have a three or four hour like time together that afternoon. Yep. And the kids come home from school and I'm there fully present with them. And all of that other stuff in my business means nothing to me because I operated in my zone of genius today. You just did the most important thing you could have done. Yes. I've had that same experience. Yeah. And you know something else that happens with you? I don't know if you're aware of this, but when you get into, these, into that zone on your podcast, like when you have one of your episodes where you're excited about a new concept and you're just sharing it, uh, and you're ad libbing, you don't have an outline, you just go live to drive, as you like to say. Live to drive. Then you are imparting that same enthusiasm and freedom and excitement and joy to other people because I have listened to your podcast on days where I felt kind of low. And it was one of those days where I heard you talking about something you were excited about, like Hamilton. Yep. And I come away from the episode feeling energized and charged up. And I realized my mood has been totally changed. And now I know why. Because I was operating in my zone of genius. Yes. Ah, I love this. All right. So anyway, that, that's the second question. What work do you do that doesn't seem like work? That when you do it, after you're finished, you say, oh, this is why I do what I do. 
All right, so that's the second question. The third question is, in my work, what produces the highest ratio of abundance and satisfaction to the amount of time spent doing that thing? Hmm. So I'll say that, I'll answer that question one more time. What in my work do I do that produces the highest ratio of abundance and satisfaction to the amount of time spent? Now, I'll give some examples because I wrote down some of mine. Number, I wrote down uh, a conversation with a friend like Ray Edwards, Dan Miller, Mark Mason, Stuart Crane, Michael Hyatt, and others. And, and the example that I give is that I, there are things that sometimes I have on my to-do list. Like I'm, I want to take a big leap. And this, I'm going to give a perfect example of this. Uh, back, in Ju- no, back in May, I made the decision I'm finally going to start doing next-level workshops. I'm go- but I don't want to do podcast-related workshops. I want to do something that's going to elevate people's lives, help them take their an online business to the next level, helping them remove limiting beliefs about what they could do as far as becoming who God created them to be, which many of those people were never created to be an employee, and I want to break them free from that. So that was my vision for these next-level workshops. And I'm like, I'm going to do this. And the thing is, is I, w- I knew that to be able to pull this off, I, and to spend the amount of time and energy, I needed to charge a thousand bucks for it. And so, <laughs> like, okay, first of all, is anybody going to pay a thousand dollars for a workshop? When I look at my some of my friends who I feel are far more successful, have far more experience to offer than I do, and they do live events and they're three forty nine or four forty nine, and I'm asking people to pay nine ninety nine. And it's like, who am I to do that? And then, you know, it's like, I don't, haven't even planned out what it is exactly the work, the sessions will be. And it's Cincinnati. Who, who, what destination is Cincinnati, Northern Kentucky, right? And so I, I, I get in my own head and I have all these limiting beliefs about my value. I'm not truly worthy of this kind of success and who would be all that interested. And I get on a call with somebody like you for 30 minutes and all of a sudden it's like, wow. Okay, I, d- I can do this. And so I, I was talking about the fact that I, I, had, I had it on my to-do list for days to create the sales page for this thing, right? And, and then I, I sent a text message uh, to Ray, and I say, hey, Ray, do you have time for a pep talk? And he said, sure, give me a call. <laughs> we get on the call for 30 minutes. Afterwards, all of a sudden, I'm on cloud nine. I do, I, all, my limiting beliefs have been busted. I, I feel worthy of what I'm doing. And not only do I feel worthy, that I feel like it would be a, it would be, uh, it would be wrong for me to withhold this yes. from people. Yes. And so I, I leave that thirty-minute call, and then all of a sudden, the amount of of w- abundance and satisfaction, and just the knowing that because of that thirty-minute call, I can now accomplish far more. Something that I've been procrastinating, putting on off for hours. And so, one of the things that I discovered is just having conversations. And there's a the reason, another reason why I feel like this ties to my zone of genius, is because I realize what I most love to do is what I experience when I get my pep talk from you. So, what you when I when I send you a text and say, "Hey, Ray, can I have a pep talk? Can we have a pep talk?" And you, what you're doing for me is what I so love doing for others. Mm, yes. Yeah, I see that. And, and that's, I mean, when you, when you ask that of me, I get excited because I know I'm going to be operating in my zone of genius, which is what I really love doing is talking to people about the potential they have to prosper and the mechanisms they can use to do it and why they deserve it and how easy it is, helping them see that they're just inches away from making that pushing through that inflection point that it's not as difficult as they think because it's right there and they, and you deserve to get it. You deserve to experience it. So that, I love those conversations for that reason. Yep. And, and one more example of this thing that you do that where you get the highest ratio of return on investment of time spent. That's another, I'm paraphrasing it now. But the other one for me is time alone, learning something new that helps me accomplish something in my own life or business and then immediately deciding how can I use this to teach others. Yep, I can see that. So, so that for me. So anyway, that's the third question. And then the fourth question is, what is my unique ability? And he's, he says, he talks about this. He says, there, if you, he explains in the, uh, in the book how to discover a skill within the skill 
within the skill. And he uses the Russian doll concept. And he gives you this outline. And again, this will all be in the book when you go through it. But anyway, he says, I'm at my best when I'm dot, dot, dot. And he says, when I'm at my best, the exact thing I'm doing is dot, dot, dot. And when I'm doing this, the thing I love most about it is dot, dot, dot. And so by going through and understanding what the zone of excellence is, and you have to ask yourself the question, and you have to agree that you're willing to feel awesome all the time. None of this works unless you actually start at the beginning of the book and answer that question honestly, and you can say to yourself, "I'm I'm willing to increase the amount of time that I feel awesome. That's the key. You, 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 because if you're honest with yourself, there's a good chance you're not really willing to feel awesome all the time because you maybe don't feel like you deserve to do it. But you can get there, and you get there by increasing the amount of time you're willing to spend feeling awesome. And there's two dangers I would like to point out that could trip you up here. One is you could be listening to this thinking, well, Ray and Cliff think they're just awesome. <laughs> well, yes, we do. But that's not the point. I was created by a creator who's awesome, and why should I think he would create junk? I mean, insulting the artwork is not a compliment to the artist. Yep. So, but that's not the point. The point is for us to encourage you to realize how awesome you are. Yes. And the second danger is for you to be afraid of that, to be afraid of acknowledging that you you have a gift that is unique to you and that you deserve and you were meant to feel awesome and operate in that gift all the time. And that, my friends, is why I wanted to bring Ray onto the Cliff Raven Scrap Show. Ray, it is always an honor to spend any moment of time with you, my friend. I feel the same way about you. And uh, before we wrap up, I, I have a little housekeeping here at the end. My next session of the Building an Online Business Workshop right here in the Next Level Studio, which, by the way, I know I, I just mentioned I, I had initially struggled selling that thing at $9.99. It is no longer $9.99. Good. It is now nineteen ninety nine, and you'll want to get into this thing before it's five thousand dollars. Yes, because I'm encouraging Cliff, even in the last twenty four hours, <laughs> charge five thousand dollars for it because it's worth at least that much. It, it, and I believe that. Oh, okay, no, that's not true. I, I believe in the. You want to believe? I want to believe that, and I know that I will eventually believe that. Yeah, and I think it'll happen sooner than I anticipate. So I do want to encourage you. You can get into the November 3rd and 4th session uh, at 1999 if you sign up now. And uh, there's, a, there's a chance that I will have some of these building an online business workshops in 2018. And, and some of them, potentially all of them, might be 1999. But I will tell you that eventually my workshops here in the Next Level Studio will likely be $5,000 and it's probably going to be sooner than I anticipate because I'm surrounded like, by people like Ray Edwards. And I'm going to consistently work on my upper limit problems. And I would love for you to come to this workshop so that I can help you break through some of your own limiting beliefs about your online business. And by the way, this workshop is specifically targeted at people who are, uh, who are currently pursuing the the generation of income around an online business. So if you are trying to build an online business around your podcast, your blog, or whatever, your YouTube channel, your your area of expertise, if you will, and if you are not currently generating a minimum of $5,000 per month consistently from your online efforts, then come to this workshop. We're going to solve that for you. And I'll just step in and say you will solve it because you are you have the gifting to be able to do that and you know for me to be here we exchange days as we explained earlier but for me to be away from my business and be doing this i know the cost it costs me in revenue $12,500 for every day i'm not at my at the helm of my ship so i'm here for 2 days so that's $25,000 and it's worth every penny i've benefited that much from being here i would have i could have written a check and been just as and have benefited just as much. So coming here for 1999, come on. <laughs> Get real. 
Well, guys, thank you so much. I look forward to the potential of working with you. And uh, guys, if you haven't done so already, you definitely want to subscribe to the Ray Edwards Show over at rayedwardspodcast.com. So there you go, rayedwardspodcast.com. Definitely one of my favorite podcasts. I never miss an episode and haven't since it actually, well, I didn't discover it until several weeks after it had started, but I went back and started from the beginning. You don't need to do that, by the way. I don't even encourage it. Because, Please don't. <laughs> because Ray's, Ray's made a couple leaps uh, since the beginning of a show. But Big I would, leaps. I would encourage you to subscribe to it, and if you want to go back, maybe go back 10, 15 episodes. You know, that, that'd be fair. But certainly, don't miss out anymore. Subscribe to him today. And if you need to, just start with the most current episode and listen forward. Uh, your life will benefit as a result. Anything else, Ray? No, just thank you. It's been a real honor and privilege to be here. Awesome. Well, with that, my friends, I encourage you to consistently, every single day, take your life and everything else you do to the next level. Podcast and some Okay, so now we have stopped the audio recording. We're still talking to the people on YouTube. So real quickly, thank you folks on YouTube. Um, and there'll be a link to Ray's podcast in the description of this video uh, and a link to the book in the video uh, description. Anything else? Yes. I, Cliff doesn't know this, but I took some video before he woke up this morning of his studio, which will be unique. So you want to check out my YouTube channel. Just look for Ray Edwards. That's the name of my channel. And you'll see what I did with the video of Cliff's studio. Awesome. I, I'm looking <laughs> forward to that. So so check that out. And um, that's at uh, youtube.com slash Ray Edwards. Slash Ray Edwards. And I'll also have a link to that in the description of the video. And, and now for you guys on YouTube, I encourage you to all take everything you do to the next level. <laughs>